All right. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. It will be a solo episode. It will be a solo episode today. And there's going to be video. Video. People are like, how come you don't have video, man? You I, I, you know, it's like I'm a one man show. I've said it a million times. Hey, it's impossible to do video, but I figured out a way to do it on Zoom here. And uh, if I'm doing a solo episode or episodes with people far away, I can kind of pull it off. So I will do a little video here, but uh, I don't think it matters. It's, um, you know, do you? I, 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 I like the episode better. I saw two faces. I, two, I saw two faces the whole time, man. Uh, my ADD drew me in to like, are those books in the background real? Are those, is that his house? Is that his TV? Whatever, man. I'm just trying to uh, keep the show fresh, keep it uh, flowing. And yeah, I'll do some video here and there and uh, see what happens. It's tough podcasting, man. You know, you're out there if you and and you're doing it for 11 years and you hope that people still dig what you're doing. And so uh, uh, I'm glad you guys are still tuning in after all these years, 11 years on 11 years on the mic. Yeah. But here I am. Gertie's here. She's on the side of me here. Going to be making little noises from now uh, now and then. Gertie sounds. She's blah, 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 blah. Gertie makes the weirdest sounds. She'd just be sleeping. She'd just be like. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm glad you're here. It's Monday and I just got back from New York City. And uh, most of you know, uh, I, I canceled a lot of my shows. I hadn't been on stage in about five weeks, but I did not want to cancel the show with Joey Diaz because two things, I I didn't want to let him down. And I knew he would understand if I canceled it, but I felt that it would be good to go see Joey, Joey Diaz and uh, some New York friends and just walk around the city by myself and just air out my uh my brain you know just air it out just get out there and walk around and take it all in i love new york city i love los angeles i love them both people are always like yeah you're fucking there you fucking la people actually la people never shit on new york it's new york people that shit on la still to this day it's hilarious but uh anyway i love them both and uh, I would love to live in both just every six weeks, just go back and forth. One day that will happen. But uh, yeah, I flew out, got on stage. I'm not going to lie. It was uh, pretty brutal the first couple nights. I just had this this uh, gnarly anxiety. And uh, I, I don't know what it was about. I mean, I, did, I didn't go on all during COVID and then, you know, I started doing dates maybe mid COVID out there. I did the Texas run with Bill and then started doing parks and all that. But that was different. Everybody had been off for a long time, all the comedians. But this was me dealing with some uh, heavy emotions and being thrown right into the game at the stand with just uh, absolute killers. And, uh, you know, I was on shows with like Joe List and Ari Shafir. Big J, Mark Norman. Uh, these are killers. And uh, if you haven't gone on in five weeks, you're just kind of like, oh, God, I got to get it together. But after, I would say, two days, I started uh, I started rocking and rolling and just feeling uh, pretty good. It felt good to get back on stage and, uh, you know, and, and just do what I love. And I know that's what my mom would have wanted. She'd be like, like I said before, no sick days. You get out there. Um, dusted off the set. It was great, man. A surprise visit from one of my oldest and best friends, Jacob Dillon. Not oldest uh, in age, but one of my longest uh, incredible friendships with that man. And I tell you, whenever I see that guy, it is just unreal how uh, how happy he makes me feel. It's just like our, our bond is 
years and years of of uh friendship and love of we just love all the same stuff music art comedy films leather jackets whenever we hook up we sit down and immediately we're going to talk about comedy we're going to talk about music and then the explosion of a uh, leather jacket talk will happen and uh i i love jacob because you see somebody who's a lunatic like yourself and you go, Oh, I could talk to somebody about leather jackets or any kind of jacket. It's a jacket thing. I don't know what the hell it is. I, I grew up in LA and San Francisco and California. You only wear a jacket a little bit here and there, even in San Francisco, it's always like 68 degrees. You kind of get acclimated to that. And then you're just like, I don't need a jacket, you know? But uh, I love jackets, and I love talking rock and roll with him. And, and speaking of jackets, I went to Standard and Strange again. Everybody always asks me, where do you get all your clothes? And uh, it's pretty much a one-stop shop. I go to Standard and Strange. They're in Oakland. They're in uh, New Mexico. Uh, and um, now New York. So I immediately go there. And, uh, oh God, it was just great to go in there. They, they got the best jackets. They got the best, uh, denim, the best boots and the people that work there are just fantastic. I, I was in there for two hours. I was texting Jacob different, uh, jacket photos. Like, look, look at this one, dude. And he's like, yeah, that one, you, that'll probably be good on the couch. <laughs> just uh, staying home, wearing a, wearing a fucking big old, furry jacket or something anyway if you're in new york or oakland the bay area go to standard and strange and get yourself uh you know fitted as the kids would say man that's a tight fit check out his fit you got to keep up with these uh you got to keep up with these fucking words i mean when i was growing up i used all kinds of words i've said it before you know ropes man that's ropes meaning no good and uh buddha for some reason, Buddha was good or bad. Sometimes my mom would say it. She'd go, oh, Buddha. <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, that's when you that's when you kind of got to figure out, are you going to stay, you know, young in your mind and say these uh, newer terms? Yeah, man. Sweet fit. And uh, and then, you know, somebody goes like that. Look at that old guy talking fit and mid, you know, instead of medium. Ah, that's a Fletch. I hit him up. I go, yeah, I, I like this. Uh, these guys are medium good. And he's all, you mean mid like the kids say. <laughs> I don't have kids, so I don't hear the uh, terms. But I do hear them when I'm out doing comedy. People will come up with yeah, a sweet fit. Fit, man. But uh, anyway. I, I do love clothes. I do love clothes. I'm fucking rocking the Rolling Stones made worn shirt today. And uh, I, I've come to the conclusion I'm going to sell all my vintage concert shirts and uh, and just wear made worn because it fits me better. And I don't it, it the fit and yeah, the fit. It fits me better. And I don't have to. um you know, worry about it getting trashed. Like, you know, some of these fucking shirts I got, they're worth a fortune now. You just don't want to wear them. You know, you don't want to get that uh, aluminum fucking deodorant. I saw a guy a couple of days ago, he raised his arms up and he just had the, just the white deodorant circle. Oh man, that just destroys vintage concert t-shirts. Just deodorant, just eats it up. All of my old shirts, not now, but I had a, a run of 90 shirts that were just destroyed from deodorant. You just have no idea. You're like, what's going on here? You're throwing in the washing machine. I washed it. It's not coming out, but then you throw it in the dryer and the deodorant just gets rock hard in the armpit. You ever had that just fucking shitty deodorant circle? I saw a guy, he was just had his arms up and it was just ruined shirt. Uh, I use the uh, organic deodorant now, which absolutely doesn't work. But I, I don't know why I why I use it. But it has no aluminum in it. it. won't fuck up your shirts. But I put it on and it works for about 
an hour or so. Actually, it works pretty good. Uh, the first few I used did not work, but the one I use now works pretty damn good. But it, uh, when I was younger, I don't know if I told this story, but I was trying to figure out how not to uh, fuck up my shirts with the deodorant. You know, I got all these vintage shirts. So I bought um, the deodorant crystal. Don't fucking do this. If anybody's ever seen it, they sell it at like Whole Foods or or natural stores. It's a, basically a crystal, a rock in a roll up type of thing. And you roll the crystal on and it stops you from sweating. And yeah, it stops you from sweating and it just puts the crystals in your armpit. And I did tell this story. I remember I, I tried to do it as a bit, you know, and after a while, you can't lower your arms because it hurts so bad. It's burning. The crystals are in the pores and they lock in there permanently like a fucking uh, one of those talon bullets. Just shit comes out. It's locked inside your armpit. And next thing you know, I'm on stage. I'm just kind of like this, like, oh, fuck. Armpit ropes. Ropes. Anyway. So uh, if you don't use the fucking crystal, it is just a goddamn scam. I don't know who thought, you know, hey, just rub this rock on. You'll be good. Everybody has to be getting it. Because I went to the doctor and he goes, oh, crystal. Yeah. Doctor on my doctor. Oh, uh, yeah. Crystal. Don't use that. <laughs> don't use that ever again. Unbelievable. Anyway, so out in New York City. And I want to thank anybody that came out to the shows. I'm still baffled. I will always be baffled till the day I die. When people go, oh, man, I didn't know you were coming to New York City. It it just, I've learned not to get angry at it anymore. It just blows my mind that nobody uses a website or, you know, they randomly happen to see my post after I've come home. I don't know how that happens. I think that people just, and I've said it before, they just, they don't go or they just, and they don't want to look like a dick. So they're like, I didn't know. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. You did because you like the photo right before the flyer photo and you like the photo right after. So you're just saying, yeah, I, I, I didn't know anyway. So uh, I was out there, the stand and I did 10 shows. Shout out to The Stand and Patrick and everybody there. It was great to see everyone. And uh, first day I got there, it fucking rained for 12 hours, which was gnarly. And then the rest of the time, it was pretty, pretty good, man. It was right around 40 degrees, which is fine with me. Walking about 8 to 10 miles a day around the city, just getting in the energy. And uh, it's nice to see the city bounce back i went during covid i said it before during covid it was fucking day of the dead zombies it was crazy how fast new york slipped into uh slipped back into the 80s in a matter of like two months it went from like disneyland Times square all beautiful and shit to like just unbelievable crack and fentanyl and meth zombies and Oh man. So it's back. Felt good. And the main reason I went out was to, uh, do the show with Joey Diaz, uh, at the Sony hall, which was just a great room right there on Broadway. Joey Diaz did a uh, residency at Sony hall, five shows. And he asked me to do the last one. It was Lee Syatt. Uh, me and uh, Joey Diaz. Oh, there was another person on the show and I can't fucking remember because I was just, uh, you know, I'm just old. But uh, I brought Joey up. I went on, did uh, 15 minutes and then brought him up and it was great to see him do stand up and it was great to see him just in general. I hadn't seen him for about eight months since Burr and I did the PNC Center in Jersey I believe that was over the summer, that big outdoor uh, concert venue in Jersey. Uh, uh, Joey came down and did uh, some time on that, but he hadn't been really doing a lot of comedy. So it was so great to see him back up. I get it. He's, he's 
he's probably in that comedy, uh, that era of his comedy career where I was with music, you know, after you do something, I did music 20, I did music 25 years. I played music 25 years. I don't know if you guys know this, but I did music <laughs> anyway. Um, so I, I get it, you know, uh, you take a take time off and figure out if you still love the art of doing stand up or music or anything, anything you've ever done. You ask yourself if you still like it after five years. I am very lucky that I found comedy at 44 years old and have something that just gets me excited to get out of the house every day. I think that's the key to living uh, a great life is always challenging yourself and finding something that's going to uh, get you out of a rut or that monotonous feeling of like, ah, oh, I don't want to do this. So um, it was great to see Joey up to killing, man, just killing. He doesn't go on every night and he's just up there, did an hour. Audience was amazing. That, that church crowd, that old school church crowd, man. I, I would love to have an audience like Joey's where, you know, it's just dedicated. They're there like a soldier, as Joey would say. I, I have uh, a great group of you out there uh, that I am just uh, thankful for. And like I always said, if you can just get 1,000 true fans, you will, you will be there. Speaking of that, I want to give a shout out to the new Patreoners. And patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. I'm going to start doing the bonus episodes again this week and some of the Zooms. So uh, join up for $5. $5, you can get the bonus episodes and you can get the live Zooms with me and some of the other Patreons. And it's fun, man. I'm, I'm, I feel ready. I feel I can do it. And uh, I'm just kind of getting back into the mode. So new Patreon or Scott Redman. Thank you, buddy. Jeremy, thank you. ZD. That's his name. ZD, Gertie. And Bobby Snakes upgraded his uh, his uh, Patreon subscription. So thank you so much. And like I said, thanks for hanging in. I just... I really couldn't fuck with the Patreon for a while. I was just, uh, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do comedy. Uh, I couldn't do this, the podcast. I was just absolutely um, just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still working through it, but I'm getting there. And uh, shout out to my mom. Uh, every episode, shout out to you, mom. I love you. And, uh, I, I saw something funny that really reminded me of my mom. That it's, it's uh, somebody told me once your mom or your, your somebody passes your dad or whatever, that there'd be constant reminders of them to keep you smiling and, and, uh, and remember them. Uh, and it's been happening like nonstop stuff, uh, you know, stuff my mom would dig or whatever, but I follow this guy on Instagram and I'm going to give you his Instagram. It's C H R I S. And uh, so Chris, and it is uh, W E E E T, Chris Wheat. Let me make sure that's right. It's three E's. And this guy, yeah, here it is. Wait a minute. Hold on. Chris Wheat. He's a reptile guy. And the reason I bring this up, let me get this here. He's, this guy is absolutely insane. Now I've talked about him before, you know, he's got fucking King Cobras. Here he is. Yeah. It's, um, Chris Wheat. So C H R I S W E E E T. And he's a, uh, it says pet breeder, but this fucking guy, man, he's got King Cobra. He's got every kind of snake on the planet. And what really got me uh, following him one time, he got bit by his fucking cobra. Just a massive king cobra bit him. The venom fucking ate away his uh, skin on his hand. And this guy's crazy, but he saves cobras in the wild and finds all types of reptiles and keeps them uh, out in the loop. And um, so he posted up this uh, 
this bird eating tarantula, which reminded me a couple of tarantula stories in my life. One was my mom and I used to, we used to go scuba dive and my mom liked to scuba dive, which by the way, when I was doing the estate sale, I found all her scuba gear. And her scuba license, I got her scuba license. I kept it. I love it. I'm going to put it in a frame. But uh, my mom would, she was a lot, I, I'm a lot like my mom. Like I, I, if I like something, I'm all in like comedy. She was like, I'm scuba diving now. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, we, you know, we got certified and we started scuba diving places. So she wanted to go to Costa Rica to scuba dive in this um, area, Roatan, which is um, they have they're famous for these underwater waterfalls. You dive down like 30, 40, 50 feet. And and if you look, it's just there's this underwater waterfall. It's not a waterfall. It's sand. That's just like. And as you swim up on it, you can hear it. It's just like roaring. like It is insane. Actually, and then you can swim behind it and be behind the sand, just seeing it go over. It is is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And totally, you know, forgot about this memory until uh, I saw this Chris Wheat put up this tarantula stuff because there's two tarantula stories. One is we're out there diving. And so we're in Costa Rica. We're in this small little area called Roatan. And they got basically these kind of beach kind of weird bungalows you stay in for like 20 bucks a night it's like nothing you know and uh and, and the power is real iffy on this island it's like they would have the power would just go in and out throughout the day and night so i'm walking back to the uh bungalow and i got like a flashlight and the power is out and it would happen, you know, two, three times a day. Zero AC, none of that. It's just straight up like jungle living. It's actually pretty peaceful. You're like, oh, man, I could live there. I stayed there for like two weeks until I was like, all right, I'm ready to get out of here. But I'm walking with my flashlight, and I'm just going back to the beach bungalow. And all of a sudden, I see this fucking thing on the ground. And it's about the size of a coffee can, maybe a little bigger, furry fucking tarantula just right by me i was like oh it scared the fuck out of me like beyond and what i didn't know is what they have there and that's what chris uh wheat has on his thing there are these bird eating tarantulas and what they do is they go up into the uh, banana trees and they spin this giant fucking web and then birds come in to eat the bananas and they get stuck in this web. And then these fucking tarantulas eat them just up there like ah, just partying. This one ran by me, man. And I was so fucking scared. I was like, I, I just yelled like, and I, you know, shit doesn't scare me, but spiders and snakes, uh, you know, I like to look at them, big ass fucking snakes. And I also like to uh, see tarantulas. So when I was young, I bought a tarantula at the pet store. His name was Tiny. When I got him, he was about this big. And he was one of those Mexican tarantulas that they sell as pets. And I would take him out for a while, you know, and I was scared. I'm not going to die uh, lie because, uh, these tarantulas would bite once in a while. They got big fucking fangs. They're big ass. They go like this. They go, they go this way and they go like this. And I think the longer you don't hold them, the more they're like, get the fuck out of here. If you start holding them right out of the gate early on, but tiny got to be pretty fucking big. He got big man. And they, you know, when they walk on you, it's creepy too. They're just like, ah, and they got the weird little, suction cup type of legs and uh, they look beautiful though but scary as fuck so anyway one time and this is this is what what reminded me of uh the story of my mom uh way you know back when like i think it's like ninth or ninth grade or, or whatever way no cell phones nothing my mom calls my friend's house where i'm at my buddy jack's house and she's like, get over here, get over here. 
somebody broke in the house and they put a tarantula in your cage and it killed tiny. I'm like, what, what are, what is my mom on? What are you talking about? They broke in the house. They didn't steal anything. They just put a tarantula in the cage that killed my tarantula. She's like, yes, get here now. So I ride the BMX bike home and uh, I get in the house and sure enough in my room, there's two fucking tarantulas. One of them's dead and the other one's over in the corner. Like, yeah, that was me, motherfucker. And I'm like, what, what the fuck? I mean, I'm kind of freaking out. Like who, who, someone broke in our house, put a tarantula in here and it killed my tarantula. Now we are completely freaked out. I mean, beyond. So we call a few people, we're telling them the story and somebody finally hips us, which the pet store never told me this. They basically do this thing called mulch, which is a shedding, like a snake. And they mulch out of their old skin. And when they come out, they come out of the bottom, the old skin pops off and it looks perfectly like a tarantula. I mean, exact. So when you go to the Chris Wheat uh, Instagram, you'll see it. It says, my female Thai bird eating tarantula just gave me another molt. And as per usual, she is in defense mode and wants nothing to do with me. I just want to take the old molt out, but she's not having it. And this fucking tarantula is like, ah, ah, as he's trying to pull the old one out. And, but it reminded me, and there it is, another mom memory right there. <laughs> I was like, uh, that's the weirdest story. Your mom calls you and says, somebody broke in the house, put a tarantula in your cage, and it killed Tiny. And then they broke out. They, they, they left. They didn't steal anything. They didn't take the... The fucking uh, the, the the ghetto stereo we had. They didn't take our answering machine, our digital answering answering machine. They didn't take my uh, my uh, you know records. They just put uh, a tarantula in to kill your tarantula. So yeah, pretty, pretty fucking crazy story, man. But anyway, that's uh, it's amazing how. Um, you know, things like that happen and people and a lot of people have just been reaching out, telling me cool stories about what will probably happen with you, which is really good. Um, I want to get into some, uh, first of all, shout out to some insane tours that are happening this year. I keep saying I'm not going to go see live music anymore, and I'm pretty much done other than special stuff and uh, special stuff is happening, man. I'm dying to see this Gojira Mastodon tour. That is going to be insane. Talk about just two of the greatest bands of the last 20 years. I mean, as far as uh, amazing songs, heavy as fuck, and super, super original. So that's going to be insane. I'm going to go see that. And then I'm fired up for Mr. Bungle. And the Melvins, they are touring together. That is going to be it. So talk about a perfect, both these tours are two perfect combos, man. I mean, Bungle and Melvins, my boy in, uh, in, in Portland, Brandon said he's going to come out for that. So I'm looking forward to seeing him at the Palladium. We'll go see uh, Bungle and the Melvins. And then Mars Volta just announced another run and I didn't get to see him because I was out with uh, Marcus King while they toured. So I'm going to go si uh, San Diego to see the Mars Volta, which would be amazing. Gertie's over here snoring. Um, so, yeah. And then, of course, Metallica's touring. I, I see them no matter what. So that's going to be great. I think they're playing at the uh, where the uh, Rams play. Which, by the way, what a fucking brutal loss on um, on the 49ers yesterday. Oh, I flew home from from New York. I was so excited. You know, I touch down. I get in my car. I'm driving over to watch the game. And, you know, Purdy, 
who I was just rooting for because I always root for underdogs. I feel like I've been an underdog all my life and I'm always rooting because I, I can relate with you, dude. No one wanted you. And then you got your shot and you fucking killed. He was killing the entire season. He gets in and he gets fucking injured. The first run, the first plays, uh, second plays actually, uh, fucks his elbow up and he's done. And then they bring in this other dude and he looked okay, but then he gets a fucking concussion. 49ers have like no quarterbacks. So they bring Purdy back in. You know, they never even had a shot after all that. After the Eagles got that fucking scam touchdown, total scam touchdown. It wasn't a catch. The next play, they get a touchdown. You know, 49ers didn't challenge it quick enough. There was all kinds of shit. Look, they lost. I get it. But God damn it, it, it hurts. I, I've kind of got back into football the last couple of years. Just on the down low. I'm not one of those guys. I'll tell you, man, a fucking... Uh, and I enjoy it. A little Sunday. And, um, you know, 49ers lost last year to the Rams. I was crushed. And now this one. And I was just... Uh, I was just bummed, man. I was so fired up. I went over to a buddy's house. He's got like a... I tell you what, man. He's got a... The projectors are getting amazing these days. And he even said his is older but he he's got just a projector that shoots onto a white wall in his living room and it's just it's it's like you're uh, at a movie theater watching f football games or you know judas priest screaming for vengeance tour or anything you know anything he puts up there is just fucking insane and uh if i do get a tv i haven't had a tv in years i'm thinking about just going a um uh, the the projector. Now I did see that scam on Instagram, and I don't know if it's good or not. Maybe somebody knows, but Ian Edwards sent it over to me, where it's basically like a cube, like this big, and it shoots onto the wall. It's just a cube, and it looks insane. So if anybody knows if that's any good or or a great projector that's not a lot of money, I might go projector. I because uh, I don't like the look of a TV in a house. It's just fucking ugly. Even though the flat screens are pretty unintrusive, uh, it's still, it's just there. So I kind of like the idea. Of, I mean, you know, my friend got one that uh, it you can put artwork on the screen. So it always looks like a painting. Now, I fucking love that. That looks cool as shit. You go in, you go, God damn, you can put whatever you want. You can put a Zeppelin photo in there. And it's like, oh, that's a killer photo. And it's your TV screen. You don't even notice. So anyway, if anybody's using a projector, uh, what are the downfalls of it? And tell me if you dig it, you know, get at me, tweet or uh, anything. And let me know what you think, because I'm just curious about uh, if I do get something. I know it's slippery slope. Get something in here. Next thing you know, I'm watching it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I can't believe I didn't see more people with it. All these people that love to be gamers and everything, because this guy's, we go over there and you're sitting on the couch and you're just watching like you're at the movie theater. It's beautiful. Sounds great. He's got it going through some kind of fucking sound. I don't know. And he said his shit's five years old. So it's got to be even crazier now. So fired up for that. Uh, quick sponsor before I keep going here. Migos dog migos dog running some uh specials right now so uh, i feed gertie migos dog if you live in california you can pick up this food at air one or healthy spot or they deliver now in uh la anywhere in la they'll deliver to your house MigosDog.com. just the finest dog food made out in malibu with human grade food no bullshit in this absolutely the cleanest gertie has not had any allergy problems since she's been eating it i feed her the salmon and they got beef coming out they have duck turkey and they have toppers to put on top of your dry food so migosdog.com excellent excellent dog food super healthy you want your dog to live a long time because uh you know hopefully you love your dog hopefully you're not one of those goddamn monsters 
that fucking like from the 70s remember in the 70s you just left your dog outside oh my god you just left your dog outside 70s style man i can't even imagine that we had a we had a few dogs they were always inside but we did have a german shepherd that was kind of he lived outside while we were uh i was at school then i'd get home and let him in you know but yeah 70s dogs that'd, that'd be a good t-shirt glad i'm not a 70s dog you know <laughs> I always love it because Joey's like, hey, leave your dog at home, you fucking freaks. What are you doing? Bringing your goddamn dog to the restaurant. Fuck you. So I don't really discuss it much with Joey, but everybody knows I bring Gertie everywhere. Comedy clubs, restaurants everywhere. Gertie. People like to see Gertie more than me. So I bring her. Gertie, Gertie. Anyway, um, MigosDog.com. Check them on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. Also, if you go to Standard and Strange, I forgot to tell you. Tell them I sent you. All right. Keeping it going here. Uh, some great records came out Friday. What a what an onslaught of uh, music on Friday. Oh, my God. The Mother Hips dropped another record. And I just want to say um, hats, off, hats, hat, 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 hats off to the Mother Hips. Uh, I think they're 32 years now or something like that. And these guys are just constantly making records, constantly touring. And, um, you know, it's just amazing to see. And they released a new record. And, uh, oh, my God, When We Disappear is the name of the record. But there's a couple songs on here that really knock me out. I like the record a lot, but two of them are like, wow. Uh, what is it? Leaving, Leaving the Valley. This song is so unusual for the mother hips. It's kind of like uh, right up my alley. It's just this got this soul rock kind of R and B beautiful feel. And I just love this song. I played it like 10 times in my hotel room in uh, New York. The people next door are probably like this fucking lunatic. Uh, and then they got another great one on there, Spirit of 98. Those are my two tracks so far. I've only had the record for a few days that I'm really, really digging. Oh, and then they did a cover of uh, is Codine, which is Codeine. But I guess because I, I called him, I said, hey, why is Tim saying Codine? Isn't it Codeine? And they said, oh, it's a cover. And that's how uh, she said it. I forget who did the co who the uh, original song was from, but it's a great song. It's got this total great country feel. I'm messing with Codine. I'm ruining it, however it goes. But, oh, man. So Mother Hips got a new record out. I want to give them a shout out. Then my boys, White Reaper dropped a new record and unfortunately i didn't get to see him in new york i was hoping to hook up with them but they were like me they were running around uh working uh but they will uh, be here in a couple weeks to talk about the new record i'm fired up to uh, see the white reaper guys again i had them right before covid that was brutal they played the troubadour i went to see him had them on the podcast and they were getting ready to do the pearl jam tour their big fucking break and then code uh COVID hit and they did get to do some Pearl Jam uh, dates once COVID uh, once COVID ended I don't know if it ended or whatever but uh, you know uh, they got a new record and the title track Ask Him For A Ride is just smoking oh my god this is an up-tempo smasher record so get in on that White Reaper if you're into uh some great Weezer-esque type of uh, beautiful hooks and just crushing uh, energy. White Reaper, man. Oh, and they got a fantastic cover. Album cover definitely is Robert Williams inspired. I can tell. Uh, great artwork. I love this artwork on the album cover. And Mother Hips album cover, too. Beautiful. Looks kind of like it may have been a... Um, a uh, oh, Fuck, what's the name of that band? Uh-oh, uh, brain's not working. Brain's not working like I want it to. Uh, shit, what are those guys called? I love them. Oh, man, I can't remember. 
damn it. Um, they're the, the Hispanic guys, man. They, they've just been around like 20, 30 years. I love them. How am I not remembering their name right now? Oh my God. I've seen them a bunch. Oh man. Anyway, holy shit. See, I got video. I can't go. I can't figure it out because I don't want to have to fucking edit the video because it takes hours. So I don't know. You guys DM me. You know who I'm talking about. Oh, what are they called? Shit, they're good. Anyway, uh, Mother Hips record, White Reaper record. And then here's a band I wanted to give you guys, give a shout out to because um, they, uh, yeah, they're really cool. The, when I was playing in Colorado uh, a year ago during, um, during uh, Thanksgiving, these guys came in to the gig. Five dudes, they had a couple chicks with them. They came rolling in. They got fucking sideburns, long hair, you know, glasses, wearing sunglasses, and but not douchey, just authentic douchey. Oh, man, I hate that word. Oh, can't even believe I said it. It's so fucking old. But they were authentic. They came cruising in. They're like, yeah, Dean Del Rey, man, big fans of the podcast. Came down to see you. And immediately I was like, oh, this is cool. I don't know these guys at all. The whole band came and uh, they brought some chicks with them and they had a great night and we hung out all night. They were just so cool. Anyway, uh, and their look was just perfect. It just looked like each guy looked like, uh, like they were 70s style, but it wasn't like, oh yeah, we went down to the, uh, you know, to the, Goodwill and just got 70s clothes. They had the fucking proper, proper look. It was shit was authentic. Anyway, they're called Love Gang and the record's called Mean Street. And uh, oh my God, great record. It came out on Friday. I think they dropped it on their own. Follow them on um, Instagram. Tell them I sent you and listen to their record. It's on YouTube. It's on any platforms that you stream on. But really cool band, really cool band. And uh, looking forward to seeing them. I'm sure they'll be out on the road. So uh, Love Gang, Mean Streak, very cool. Right, Gertie? Gertie! Um, and then um, I flew to New York. JetBlue, I always fly on JetBlue. I try to fly on them as much as I can because they're the least of the animal air airlines because they have free movies, free Wi-Fi, and better seats. And they still, old school, give out a little food and snacks and stuff. They're not like, uh, we got some almonds here for $39. And then we have a crusty, stale sandwich in this plastic container for $19.95. And we don't take cash. So uh, these guys are still pretty fucking good. Them and... Um, Rest in peace, Virgin Airlines, because that was my main uh, my main brother when I'd fly to uh, New York and back. I always flew Virgin. Every Sunday, not every, but I, when I'd fly out to New York, I'd go on a Sunday evening at like, uh, I think it was 11.30. Give me your goodies. And then I would um, fly from Burbank to JFK and uh, Virgin, just killer. Anyway, so I got on the JetBlue flight and fell asleep right away because my flight was like 6 a.m. And woke up mid-flight and I was like, oh, movies. My new way of catching movies now is uh, I would have never done this years ago, but I watch all my movies now on an airplane because um, I don't know. It's just it's just the, the time that I have. It's like this is when I can listen to it. Gertie's trying to. Get under her blanket. Let me fix this. Get over there, Gertie. There you go. So I wake up and uh, finally I go, okay, I'm going to watch Elvis. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, you know, the, the whole family, the uh, Elvis family is just, it's just, it's just been brutal. You know, Lisa Marie. Oh my God. Her son, a couple. It's just a, what a, what a, what a tragic, tragic family. Just highs, big highs and big lows. So I go, all right, I got to watch the Elvis movie. I'm not, I'm not a big Elvis guy. My dad loved him. Me and my dad didn't get along. And uh, here Elvis kind of reminds me uh, of my dad. 
but it, 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 re it really doesn't have that much to do with that. It's just, I'm just not an Elvis guy. I do love, love, love the 68 comeback. I love his look. I love that authenticity, that, that just the realness of them just playing on that round little stage. Scotty Moore, the guys in there, the band was killer. His look was great. But I, I never just, I, I actually don't even own an Elvis record. And I, um, I never play Elvis, ever. I know a lot of people love Elvis, the Beatles, uh, Zeppelin. Robert Plant loved fucking Elvis. And I get it. They grew up. And I also appreciate Elvis for the, uh, the outlawness of him back in the day. But, uh, and you know, jump starting that rock and roll with him and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and, uh, and all, all of that fifties rock, you know, Tootie fruity, woo, all that stuff. But uh, I don't really go to it. And that's, you know, that's, you know, obvious. Uh, I didn't grow up in that era anyway. So I fire on the Elvis movie and uh, you know, a big fuck you to uh, Colonel Parker. That guy was just the epitome of garbage and robbing and everything shit uh, Colonel Parker was as basically just just ruined and killed Elvis. That's how I feel. And that's from the, the knowledge that I have of uh, Colonel Parker. That's what I'm going to go with. So I hate Colonel Parker so much that it was making me hate Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks fucking, uh, you know, Gump, Forrest Gump himself. I'm like. I hate you right now. <laughs> it's just so crazy. And I love Tom Hanks. It's the, the, I started thinking about the depth of him from Mr. Rogers to Colonel Parker. Oh my God. Two of the fucking most opposite people on the planet, right? Colonel Parker and fucking Mr. Rogers. Oh, anyway, I got it. Uh, about an hour and a half in the film's long. I think it's two and a half hours, but it doesn't feel long. It moves. It feels good. It's fucking good, man. And, uh, and then I land, I'm like, shit, I'm only at the 68 comeback tour. That's how far up I got. I still got to get into fat Elvis and, uh, the drugs and everything. And so we land and I go, that's all right. I'm going to watch it on the way home next week when I fly home. So I get on the plane yesterday and immediately get my headphones out. I'm ready to watch the second half. And the guy, captain comes on. He goes, this is the captain speaking. Uh, you're going to be pretty much fucked on this flight because there's going to be no TVs. They're broken. Sorry. And I was like, what the fuck? It's so amazing how addicted you can get to Wi-Fi and movies on a plane. Because before they had all that, you just sat there. You just sat on a plane for hours with your own thoughts, maybe some magazines and a book. You know, you're just sitting on this plane, like looking at your watch, like every four minutes, like, fuck, how much longer? How much? Oh, fuck. Only eight minutes went by. It just. So I just sat on the plane and I was just like, uh, I had Wi-Fi, thank God. But still, they had so many movies I wanted to uh, I wanted to finish the Elvis movie and then dive into it. There's another movie I wanted to see on there. So now I have not seen I had I, I don't have HBO. I guess it's on HBO. So I got to see hit me with your HBO numbers, guys. Hit me with your codes. <laughs> hit me with your goddamn HBO codes. I need to watch the second half of Elvis. Um. But I also watched for the first time, I don't know if you guys were on board where I was talking about where I feel like people watch movies or don't see a movie for years. And they just, uh, they say they've seen it just so you're not involved in the conversation. Mine was, uh, for years, it was uh, The Big Lebowski. You know, I didn't want to tell anybody I didn't see it because they just fucking chew your ear. Oh, dude, you haven't seen the big Lebowski? Oh, dude, you have not seen the big Lebowski, dude. It was like, oh, because I was kind of fucking living a life. <laughs> <clears throat> well, there was another movie on that list that I have only, only saw like the first 15 minutes 
and then never saw the rest of the movie. And I was bummed. And I kept saying, I need to finish this movie. And that was all the way back in like, whenever it came out 15 something years ago, training day. So I fa- I sat down and I finished training day. Finally, and I actually just watched it from the beginning again, just so I was fresh. Cause it, what happened? I saw, um, I was watching training day and then, uh, I, I got a last minute gig or something and just said, shit, I got to go and left and never saw the entire training day. I got up to the, like, I didn't know you like to get wet. When Ethan Hawks, he makes Ethan Hawks smoke the PCP. Oh my God. Now training day, fucking great film. The ending's a little Hollywood, which I was kind of surprised, but still solid, solid film. The acting is unreal. And uh, Denzel, Denzel's a fucking, he's like, Denzel's like Tom Hanks. They just get in these movies and crush it. You know, uh, Tom Cruise also people clown on Tom Cruise. I said, fuck you guy just does hit after hit, which by the way, avatar two is, I haven't seen it. Giant hit, giant hit. He, uh, you know, he, uh, did pretty much the impossible. It's like at 2.4 billion or something right now. This is just insane. Avatar, James Cameron crushing a titanic avatar and the second avatar the guy has more money than earth holy shit and i'll go see that one i might have to see that one on mushrooms just for a fucking just for a comical i'm gonna be 57 this friday maybe i do that on my birthday mushrooms at the movie theater <laughs> just like a kid just in there tweaking ah Looking at the fucking Avatar dudes. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Anyway, so I, I saw Training Day, and uh, now I can now I can talk about Training Day. <laughs> Do some old dated comedy. You guys see Training Day, man? This shit is crazy. Fuck. <laughs> um, shit, I guess that's about it, man. Um, oh. No, one last thing I wrote down on here. Uh, rats eating wires. So my boy just called me before I started the podcast. And uh, I go, hey, what's happening? He's like, dude, I, I got rats. And they're getting in my cars. He's got two Porsches. He's got a 911 and he's got a, uh, what's he got? Cayman. He's got one of, he's got one of the SUV ones. Cayenne, uh, one of those. And I didn't know this, but I guess in 2006, the manufacturers changed the wiring in the cars to be coated in soy instead of petroleum. So they wouldn't dry up and the rats smell this soy and they go in and they eat your wires. What the fuck? What kind of like, road warrior end of the world shit is that like i'm starving let's just eat these wires ah. so he goes out to start his 9 11 a couple days ago and he turns it on he said just all these sensors lighting came up power steering out stereo doesn't work uh oh you know uh, ac's gone he's like what the fuck is going on with my dash so he opens up the hood and it's just Chewbacca, just, just fucking rats ate all his wires. And he's like, what the fuck? So then he goes to get into his Cayenne and they ate all those wires. So he, both of his fucking high dollar cars don't run. And now he might have to move. He called up the landlord and he's like, dude, there's rats here, man. They ate, we got to get something going with They ate the wires in my car and, and the landlord obviously had had it before just a shitty landlord, just like I had at my last place with the broken sewer pipe. He just goes, yeah, 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 that'll happen. That'll happen. Yeah. Hey dude, I got rats. They're eating the wire. Yeah. Yeah. That'll happen. What the fuck? So now he might have to move or he's got to move. He doesn't have a garage. They fucking get in it. 
Somebody told him to get this spray. He sprayed it in there. They just were still in there eating. They ate the fucking, uh, the, the car hood has like a liner to keep the, the engine insulated and quiet and everything. They ate that. They ate all his shit. Holy shit, man. Rats. Oh my God. I didn't see any rats this time in New York, which is weird because it must be uh, too cold or something. Because usually I see about a thousand rats a, uh, a day, at least a thousand a day. That's not even exaggerating in New York. Just rats. They're just part of the program. Anyway, so, uh, oh man, fucking rats ate his wires. I, I, I mean, if you got a, a car that's uh, got the soy wires, man, it could happen. It could happen. Tour dates coming up. This Friday, I'll be in Palm Springs. Come celebrate my birthday. I'll be at, uh, what is that name of that place? I'm doing a casino out there. And uh, looking forward to, you know, rocking around for you guys, with you guys. I will be at the Palm Springs Agua Caliente Casino this Friday. February 17, 18, the stage door in Elko, Nevada. I return back to Elko, Nevada, working on some new material, having some fun. Shaylin's going to be there with me. Uh, he's, he's a great friend and a funny, funny comedian. So Shaylin and I will be in Elko, February 17, 18. February 22 through 25. This is a very important one. I'm coming home to San Francisco to do the punchline four nights. And please tell a friend about this. I want to pack the houses, you know, I'm trying to just get butts in the seats. So people will be like, fuck, he's doing some tickets, man. And I get booked to other places. That's just kind of how it works anyway. So those are the dates coming up this Friday in Palm Springs, February 17, 18, the stage door in Elko and the punchline tickets, Dean Del Rey.com website, hit it up. Also, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a review on iTunes. All of that stuff really helps. I'm just pounding away, keeping going, keeping my brain, uh, keeping my brain sane. I uh, love all you guys. Keep the candles lit. Shout out one more time to my mom. And, uh, by the way, my record of the month I've been listening to again is radio heads. In Rainbows. I cannot get enough of this record again. I love this band. And every once in a while, I fire up one of their records and I just rock it for a month. And In Rainbows really was my New York soundtrack walking around. So uh, there you go. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. <laughs>